right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Trust Engine YouTube channel. This is both on the Trust Engine YouTube channel as well as the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel. I'm Dave Savage, founder of Mortgage Coach and Chief Innovation Officer of Trust Engine. We've got a, a very special guest. Uh, it's been a while since I've interviewed this person. Before I do, this is the first time I've uh, done an interview with Kareem. Kareem is going to start creating more content with me. Uh, he is a leader in the mortgage co or in Trust Engine marketing team. What's up, Kareem? You pumped? So pumped, Dave. Uh, I know. I, I believe most marketers and most industries now, professional industries, know about Story Brand and how they have helped a lot of businesses clarify the message and build trust with audiences. And I can't be more excited to talk with JJ today. All right. So I, I interviewed JJ um, April 2020. I interviewed him, which was just a couple, I mean, I won't even say months. I mean, it was weeks since week. COVID. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to put a link to that here down below, that link to that down below in show notes. Um, first of all, the content was incredible and it was just as relevant today. Uh, the video quality and the audio quality for both of us was, you could tell we were we were getting our, our Zoom game on. It was quarantine uh, quality. Yeah, it was quarantine quality. Yeah. I, I interviewed Donald Miller. Um, at the end of 2019, thank you, Daniel Harkavy, for helping me get that interview. And it was great. I mean, both of those will be down below in show notes. Uh, you know, what I what I thought we'd do, Kareem, um, I could do JJ's, like, who is JJ Peterson? But why don't you do the first round of that? And then I'll, I'll ask the first question. So for any loan officer watching this, you know, why are we interviewing this guy and why should they listen? So first of all, it's Dr. JJ, right? JJ, he has doctorate in communications, right? And he's the head of StoryBrand. And anyone who has been under a rock for the past, I don't know, a few years and don't know StoryBrand, StoryBrand is this amazing framework for marketers and professionals in every industry uh, on how to build, um, how to clarify your message and how to build trust in an authentic way with your customers, so customers listen. And it's based on a storytelling framework where you no, I'm sure JJ will get into this, but you you position uh, the uh, yourself as the guide and your customer is the hero. So um, JJ, how did I do? That well done. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you yeah. for the introduction. You're, you're also a co-author. You have a podcast called Marketing Made Simple. You have a book with Donald Miller called Marketing Made Simple. So uh, I want you to. I want to hear from Dave, and then you, of course. I'll put a little frame. So yeah, yeah first of all, it is the one book that you know whether you're in sales you know you're in marketing like this marketing made simple is a must i i love story brand and and i used to always like that's the must but i really feel like marketing made simple incorporates a lot of the 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 that you know the one message i'd give to people as we you know bring jj on stage and we start asking him questions is the be the guy not the hero is like literally the most important concept I actually wrote an article after interviewing Donald for the first time. And, you know, this is something loan officers you want to give to your realtors. And this is something, if you're a head of production, if you're a head of marketing, um, knowing this and doing this are two different things. So I, I want everybody, you know, that concept will come up. I'm sure JJ will cover it, but I, I want you to, you know, you're going to hear things that you've heard before. I want you to ask, like, if you believe it to be true, how well are you executing at that? You know, because we can all do a lot better. So JJ, um, you know, I really want to start around AI because it is just, you know, it's the number one headline, uh, not only in mortgage. I mean, it is tr transforming industries and it just started. Like this will always go down, you know, like 2000, 2020 will be the year of COVID. And, and, you know, there are, you know, 2027 was the year that the iPhone was launched. It was also, you know, the beginning of the mortgage meltdown, but, you know, we will look back a decade from now, we will look back two decades from now and 2023 will be the year that AI, you know, showed up in, you know, in, in real world. So, you know, with that said, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And, you know, you know, what's the future for marketers with AI? I'm actually, I'm speaking at a conference in Boston in a few weeks. Uh, it's called Inbound. And I looked down the agenda and almost 
every session, I mean, I, not every, I'm going to say truthfully, though, 70% of the sessions have to do with AI. It's what everybody's talking about right now. And the big thing is because when chat GPT launched, um, it became the fastest growing user app of all time. So what took like Instagram and Facebook and, you know, Twitter to years to get the number of users, basically it took, uh, chat GPT, like 30 days. I mean, really, if you look at the numbers, it's insane what it took all these other user apps to grow like millions of users. And then, and it took chat, chat GPT about, about one month. And um, so people are using it in all sorts of areas, you know, in video production and anything, but it's really being used a lot right now in marketing. And the first thing I would say is that I think a lot of people who are in the marketing space and are in any kind of space where you're developing communications um, to go out to mass audiences, AI can be an amazing tool and you need to be at least a little bit educated on it. So the first thing I would say is everybody needs to be a little educated and don't be afraid of it. <laughs> like, so that's the first thing is it's actually fun to play with. If you've never used it before, anybody who's a professional marketer at this point, I'm sure has been using it to some degree, but really it's just another tool that helps us do our work faster, be creative faster and reach targeted audiences faster. So that's, that's kind of the bottom line is AI, I would say is not necessarily either good or bad. It is a tool that we can use in the same way that you don't say, well, Instagram is good or bad. How you use Instagram to reach your audiences is good or bad, right? And same thing with AI. So people need to be a little educated on it. I would say experiment. But the other thing that I would say right now is that as we start moving forward and more marketers and more businesses and more uh, business owners are going to be using AI, we are going to be putting more and more marketing and more and more noise out in the marketplace. That's just going to, because it's going to be easier to send out emails on a more regular basis a blog post on a more regular basis, Instagram post on a more regular basis. So more things are going to be out there. AI is not a magic wand that you can wave and reach your target audience. You have to have a clear message to put in to AI generating apps to get out clear message. If you put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. And I do think there's going to be a lot of garbage out there because people are putting garbage in. Their message is not clear. That's the first piece. And then the second piece is that because there's going to be so much garbage out there, people who continue to have a personal touch, who continue to keep their audience in mind and their target audience in mind when they're creating their messaging is going to, they are going to stand out in the market. When you bring a personal touch, when you bring a targeted touch, and when you keep the customer story first in, in your message and marketing, that is how you're going to stand out in a sea of noise with AI everywhere. I know I just threw a whole bunch of stuff at you, so <laughs> feel free, whatever follow-up you have about that, but that I'll just kind of sum up what I was saying. The first thing is, one, don't be afraid of AI. AI is a tool that we can use to reach more people and do our work faster. Second, if you don't have a clear message before you start using AI, you are going to garbage in means garbage out. You're not going to have good, good marketing that's coming out, good, good communications coming out. And then third, even in the midst of all of this, you need to keep your customer story in mind first and have a personal touch with it all. Otherwise, you're just going to get lost in the sea of noise. Wow. I love, I love that, man. We could just... Like so much value in that. I could tell already that Karim's going to want to turn that into some micro content. Yeah. Uh, you know, super powerful. So guys, you're in mortgage. Noise is up. And it, by the way, it's already super noisy in social media. It's super noisy in inboxes and it's only going to go up. And, you know, I've been talking a lot about this from stages because I'm seeing loan officers, you know, do what I call news hacking, you know, where they're taking news, and they're taking this national news and then they're, you know, putting their word behind it. They're being the news, which by the way, that's great. Um, but I always say that, you know what, that's great. Do that. But there's a difference between doing it in a way that creates a lot of likes and a lot of views. At the end of the day, you want to do it in a way that creates leads. And if, and if you want to create leads, you need to 
hyper-localized and hyper-personalized. And really you could just say hyper-personalized because when you say hyper-personalized, you're localizing it. So you'll you'll hear me continue to talk about this stages, you know, like show that those slides shows that national data. Then if you want to create leads, you know, localize it and then use a mortgage coach total cost analysis to show like, Hey, this is what it, this is what it, how it helped a family go from renting to owning and, you know, improving their net worth. And, and then, and then it's in the close go. And if you want me to do one of the, like this story I just shared, you want me to do a story like this, where you've taken national news and you've personalized it, then call me. And then, you know what people are doing is they're calling you and they're asking you for your infograph, your personalized infograph that you created. And so mortgage coaches, like, that was so powerful. Um, Kareem. Uh, yeah. So one of the things I do at Trust Engine is content creation and social media management. And AI is very helpful for me, at least in uh, in brainstorming ideas. Uh, but at the end, if I the content I'm creating has to be, like you said, JJ, personalized to my audience. It has to be focused on serving them and, and building trust with them. So, for example, you can use AI or you can use ChatGPT and tell it, give me 30 Instagram ideas to uh, to go viral. This is one way of using AI, right? Another way is, no, uh, identify uh, top problems first-time home, home owners or home buyers are facing. And then you can use that as a brainstorming um, um, tool to help you actually create content that helps your, your, your audience. So JJ, do you have an example of how we can use AI and, and cut through the, through the noise with AI? Yes, when what you're talking about is the way that I have found to use AI the best is that kind of brainstorming, yeah. um, getting things going for me. And the prompts you mentioned, like give me something goes viral, or give me something that top five problems new homeowners are facing or top five, you know, you can even put in like, make me an expert on this by giving me the top five articles that are trending right now. And you can ask it to help you become an expert. So it's a, it doesn't do all the work for you, but you can put in, in questions or information that give you the data you need to then go and write what you need to write and create what you need to create. Yeah. A couple of tips on that is the more specific you can be, the better off your, the responses are going to be. So instead of just saying, give me five Instagram posts that are going to help me go viral. Mm -hmm. What you want to say is something along the lines of, for you want to say for an audience for a say a um a realtor audience or a mortgage lending audience that's so very specific audience or yeah. first time home buyers audience so name the audience give me five so be specific give me five and then give like a tone you can say give me five humorous posts give me five money making posts give me five business sounding but you know something like that give it kind of a tone and then give it the outcome that you want so mm -hmm. what do you want it to do go viral or uh, uh get me more leads or something like that so the more specific you can be in your prompts the better responses you're going to get now once you you get those responses back, don't just sit there and, and kind of then copy and paste with it, right? This is now where the personalization comes in because mm -hmm. everybody can put in those exact same prompts as you. So mm -hmm. if everybody in your industry is putting in the exact same prompts, you're all getting the same similar results. So you need to be able to stand out. So mm -hmm. how do you personalize it? For me, what we really talk about in the story brand framework is understand the story that you're telling with your marketing. So whether that's in social media posts, blog posts, anything is that your customer is the hero of the story. You are not your business, your, uh, the work you're doing is not the hero in the story. Your customer is the way that you make the story about the customer instead of about you is identify the the fastest way to do it is identify what are the problems your customers are experiencing mm -hmm. so when you can identify what problems your customers are experiencing and you can create content to then solve those problems what you're then doing is positioning yourself as the guide in the customer story so you are positioning yourself as yoda 
and your customer is Luke Skywalker, or you are Gandalf and your hero is Frodo, right? So when you do that, when you position yourself as a guide, what you're doing is you're inviting your customer into a story that they get to be the hero of. Mm -hmm. So by working with you, by hiring you, by using your product and service, they actually become the hero. You're the guide who helps them win the day. So when we're talking now about standing out in the marketplace is when you take those AI ideas that have come to you, whether it's blog posts, whether it's social media posts or emails you can send out, <clears throat> the ones that you really want to look for to use are the ones that position you as the guide, which means you're addressing specifically your customer's problem and how you can solve them. So they may AI may give you viral blog posts and you know just like dave was saying those may be on a national level that that's a blog post that's going on a national level <clears throat> uh, of of being viral but i live right now in nashville the housing market and lending market in nashville is very different than other places in the country right now and not only like when you're talking say be uh, uh you know <clears throat> like people buying homes, it's different in East Nashville than it is in Brentwood, than it is in Franklin, than it is, you know, and that's it within 10 minutes of each other. There is a huge differentiation in how people are buying homes, when they're buying homes, where they're buying, all of that stuff. And so you need to take those viral ideas and then personalize it to your area and take the ones that's, that specifically speak to problems that people are experiencing right now in this space and give them value, give them information, give them access, give them value that can help them start to solve their problem. When you do that, you position themselves yourself as the guide and they begin to trust you in their journey and ultimately do business with you. Awesome. That's, so, that's that all makes sense. <laughs> so be more very, very specific, know exactly who your target audience is, what problems they're facing, and then always talk as a guide, trying to help them overcome a problem to reach a goal and avoid the stakes, avoid the consequences facing them. Exactly. Love, love, love that conversation. Love that question. And I think it's a layup for this next question that I want to ask you. You know, one, not one of the biggest problem. People say interest rates are the biggest problem in the market. And they are, but I, I did a webinar a little while ago and someone, you know, Rob Chrisman, who people in the world usually know who Rob is, made a point that even if rates were 0% right now, uh, it's hard to find homes. You know, there's an inventory crisis in every single market in America and realtors need, um, they need listings, you know? So, so if you were, um, you know, while our audience is loan officers, their main referral partners, realtors. So they always want to like, and we want them to watch this interview. We want them to say, Hey, realtors, I got a great interview for you. Yeah. So if and you could answer this with AI or you could answer this however you want, but what kind of messaging, how should realtors go about creating messaging to get listings? You know, like that is the biggest problem. Any, any advice on a process to come out with great content, great social media posts, with AI, without AI, any advice to everyone? Yeah, for and you're talking specifically for realtors. And so for the loan officers to be able to help realtors, right? Is that kind of what you're sure. talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that because everybody kind of can understand that a little bit too. <clears throat> so in getting leads and getting things is because it is such a competitive market and pe people are feeling a lot of pressure from the, not only, you know, not enough homes, but also not, an, you know, the interest rates that are, that are happening right now. What I would do if I was a realtor is I would just name that, name that problem. And there's two different ways to address it. One is basically naming the problem that most people feel like they're priced out of the, of buying a house right now because of interest rates. So just name what people are talking about and people are saying, and then go, but here's the thing they're actually wrong. That's the hook. Then you're going to create a paradigm shift in the marketplace and begin to differentiate yourself. Even if everybody in your area is saying the same thing, what you're doing is they're not seeing everybody else's marketing out there. They're seeing yours and you're saying, hey, this is the problem everybody thinks they're experiencing, but let me give you a paradigm shift of why there's actually something different. And so they may say as a realtor, 
the reality, and and this is to get more leads, right? They're saying that everybody thinks they're priced out of the market because of interest rates. The reality is they're priced a good interest rates right now. Well, I don't know how I would say this because I don't know all the details, but I might say something along the lines of the reality is <clears throat> over the long term of a loan, you're at, at, between that and renting, you're actually going to save money. So just kind of name that and then go, here's the real problem. The real problem is people aren't able to find homes to buy right now. And then you position yourself as the person who can help people find those homes that nobody else can. And so that's like where you're doing is you're naming your customer's problem. Instead of saying, I'm the number one real estate agent in the area. I have all of these houses that I am, I have access to. I'm good at this. I'm going to work hard for you. Nope. That makes you the hero of the story. Don't use that as your marketing. When you do that, I talk to marketing, uh, to real estate agents all the time. And, you know, when you think of real estate and realtor marketing specifically, you think of like, you know, faces on a bench, right? You think of like right. a smiley, happy person, like with their arms crossed, like I'm going to get you the home. And the reality is that's positioning them as the hero. What you need to do is position your customer as the hero. So instead of your face on a bench, it should be a smiley, happy family in front of a house. It should also be talking about how most people are really struggling because they're priced out of the market right now. The reality is we can get you in a home sooner than you think, right? And make it about them, not about you. So those are just kind of a couple quick things of what it looks like to position your customer as the hero by naming the problem that people are experiencing and then talking about how you solve it or solve it differently. So I, I love that formula and and I, I want to, it's not a different question, but just kind of the question after the question, um, loan officers have databases. And actually one of our solutions is um, helping monitor that database so that we can predict who's most likely to want to sell their home. Or if someone does sell their home, a listing you know, alert, hey, such and such just listed their loan or listed their home, which means they're a move up buyer. So what would be, would it would would there be any nuance to what you just shared if a loan officer was trying to write an email or if they were trying to write a script to call their customer database and they were looking for people that wanted to move up. Is there any any nuance or anything you would add on to that for, for loan officers to create, you know, move up buyers out of their customer database? So their customer database, they're reaching out to people who are not currently selling, but might yeah. like might be in the near future. Because they're looking for people that want to sell so they can come to their realtors and go, hey, I got one of my past customers or I got some of my database that wants to talk to you. Yeah. You know, how, any ideas on how they could create those opportunities? Yeah. So when you're reaching, it's the same kind of thing I was just saying. So like, let me just say, what would be, let me ask you, you you're, I'm putting you on the spot yeah. right now. Do it. So what would be in that case, people have like kind of, you know, maybe searched a little bit, they've kind of begun feeling it out, but they're not about to be move up buyers yet. What is stopping them from being move up buyers? What's like the number um, one or two reasons why people don't follow they, through? They they have a super, they have a two or 3% interest rate. And they're like, rates are at seven. They actually want to move up. You know, they've yeah. had a kid, they have a new bedroom, but rates are so low that they are like, hey, I'm stuck. I'm a household hostage. I'm yep. stuck. Exactly. Um, which is, I'll just be honest, that's where I am, right? Like I'm literally in that exact same spot. So now for you, if you were going to be talking to a loan officer, what is something that they or their connections could do to alleviate some of that pain of the 5% interest jump? So what we teach, and by the way, our product does this, is it show that family, call them A, hey, living in this current home, what do you think homes are going to appreciate? Oh, 4% annually? And this is your rate, and this is your payment. Now, what's that move up home? Oh, it's, you know, 20 to 30% more. And oh yeah, the rate's higher. But you think it's going to appreciate that? Look at the long-term impact. What what would that do to your net worth in five years, 10 years? What would that do to your financial freedom point? So we often, you know, like don't sell it, just show it yes. based off that customer's solutions. And then if the customer's like, I'm still stuck, that's cool. Yeah. But lots of times they're like, oh my God, I didn't realize that. Yes. That will improve my freedom point in life. That will, 
you know, so that that's how we exactly. Teach people to do it. So that and so you're doing it right, <laughs> and that's what every loan officer should be doing, <laughs> because that's the thing is where a lot of times it, I I've worked with loan officers before and they lead with service. They lead with like, you know, we're great at service. We get things going quickly and all that stuff, which is a pain point kind of, but not really. The pain point people are really experiencing is that like the move, I don't want to move up because it's going to cost me seven, it, you know, I have to now take out a loan at 7%. Now, the actual then, and what they're really then, if you're, so the loan officer can't quote unquote solve that problem. But the what the loan officer can really dig into is saying 7% is not your problem. What really we're trying to solve is lifetime wealth. Mm -hmm. And if we actually, and you're afraid that by moving up, you are actually going to lose part of your wealth, potential savings, all that stuff. And what I want to show you is that by moving up, you're actually going to increase your lifetime wealth, lifetime earning, all of that. And so that's the direction to go. And then when we talk about personalization of it, then what we really need to do is not just say what this happens on a national level, but let's actually take somebody in Nashville who wants to move from East Nashville to Woodbine or East Nashville to, you know, and we can, and it doesn't have to be that specific, but use examples in Nashville of how somebody specifically could be affected by a move over the long-term life of the loan. Love that. Thank you so much. That's so powerful. And I hope every leader of loan officers heard that. I hope every loan officer, and by the way, remember what I said at the beginning, you heard it, you know it, are you doing it? And if you're a head of production, what percentage of your loan officers are capable of doing that? And that's one of the reasons why we're doing Mortgage Coach 10X training right now. Go to mortgagecoach.com forward slash 10X. And we're teaching loan officers to do that. And, so the, one and thing I want to, what, oh, go what ahead. you're saying real quick, Kareem, is just that, so I, my dissertation, you know, it was on narrative framework and narrative marketing. And I really, very simply, I wanted to understand is narrative marketing effective? What types of stories are more effective? And, and bottom line is when you use a narrative framework that positions your customer as the hero it actually outperforms other forms of marketing. So data-driven, feature-driven, those kind of things. So that was the first question I wanted to know is, is narrative marketing effective? The answer was yes. The second question I wanted to know is, who is it effective for? It, is it better if you are a giant business or a small business? If you have years of experience or no experience, or if you are in uh, if you're in a, a service industry or a, a, a you sell direct to clients or a, or you're a B2B kind of business, I, I was looking at everything. I looked at every variable possible. And what came back was that it, it works for every type of company, every type of business, every type of service. There was one variable that made a difference on effectiveness, and that was implementation. Literally. You said you you said it. It's one thing to know it, but if you only know it, and we'd think sometimes just by knowing it that we're going to have success, we're not. Implementation is the key to success. <laughs> now that sounds very like elementary and dumb, and I literally spent nine years studying narrative theory to come to that conclusion. But the reality is, if you know it, you need to do it, and. Here's the great thing about what my dissertation actually the research showed is if you do it a little bit, you actually will still see success. So you don't have to like everybody thinks, well, I have to go all in and I have to create this entire plan and everything. No. If you start with your social media, if you start with one email, if you start with one lead generator, if you change some language on your website, each step that you take incrementally increases your success. But the fun part about it is one step, literally doing one thing, sending one email will allow you to see some success in this space. Implementation is the key. Just knowing is not enough. You have to do. Absolutely. Thank you, Jay. This is a really amazing advice. And I just want to highlight something very quick. Um, one thing I love about our product is that it's not just focused on selling a, an external problem. And something that I love about the story brand framework, you guys mentioned that a lot that uh, companies tend to sell uh, solutions to external problems, 
but uh, we should be selling, but, but, but people buy uh, solutions to internal problems. So an external problem can be, I want to buy a home. But the internal problem is I want to build wealth. I want to have, you know, have, you know, money for my college, for my kids' college fund. Uh, these are all other, you know, internal problems that, that customers are, are are trying to to solve, right? So I really love that you mentioned that that it's not about the, the interest rate. It's not about the current uh, market status. It's about lifelong, you know, your, your internal problems. So I have a question for you because I have I have a bachelor of fine arts in theater. So I I love storytelling. I know it works. I use it in marketing every time. But marketing can sometimes have this bad reputation of being ingenuine or manipulative. So how can you? What's your advice or, or, or what's your, your, your take on how to use marketing and storytelling in a very authentic way? The first thing I would say, and this is, it's just really simple and an in, in integrity thing is don't sell to people who don't need your product. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the first part is when you position your customer as the hero, what you're doing is saying, you have a problem that I can help you solve. And you're inviting them into a story. Sometimes they don't know they have the problem. So it's not like if they don't know they need you, that's that's not what I'm talking about here. If you actually can't help solve somebody's problem or help them move forward, don't sell. Don't sell. That's just an integrity issue. And that's some of the authenticity. And people can smell that a mile away when you're mm -hmm. just like trying to pitch something that they don't need. So that's the first thing. The second thing about being authentic is really starting with a customer problem. When you talk about the problems they're experiencing or, you know, say on, in emails or in social media and putting it out there as a question, you know, if you said like everybody in America right now is suffering from the housing crisis. Well, that's not actually true. <laughs> that's not actually true. But if you say, hey, are you in a position right now where you're you're feeling stuck um, because you got a great interest rate, but also your home that you currently live in doesn't really fit your family needs? Mm -hmm. What that does when you ask a question is it allows people to opt into the story. And mm -hmm. you can do that in email. You can do that in video. You can do that in social media. It allows people when you name that problem – which is I, I just named the problem I'm currently experiencing. Literally, my family just grew. Mm -hmm. um, I was a Congrats. single person. Thank you. <laughs> and so I was uh, for a long time, I was single. And then now my partner brought two kids and we all live together. And so there's four of us in a house that was meant for a single person. And but I have that killer interest rate loan. <laughs> and so we're, what we're sitting there is, is, is if somebody said that on social media, and I'm sitting there like, I'd like a bigger house, but I don't know how to do it. And somebody said that I can go, yes, tell me more. Like now I'm opting into that because they've actually named a problem I'm experiencing. If I'm not experiencing that problem, then I am not going to see that person as my guide. You know, see what I mean? Like, and so what you, when you put, go at it in a more gentle, inviting kind of way, what you're allowing people is to opt into that story. And, and so when, what we talk about a lot of times in story brand is companies come to us and they say, help us tell our story. And typically I go, great, I can do that. But when I get into it, what I actually tell them is first off, you're not actually telling your story. What you're doing is you're inviting a customer into a story that they get to be the hero of. You're not even telling your customer story. You're inviting them in. And the way that you do that is by talking about their problems. By the way, that also is what causes people to pay attention to your marketing. When you talk about a customer problem, that's what makes people pay attention. Because in story framework, if there is no problem in a movie, in a story, in a book that the hero is experiencing, there is no, the story is not good. It's not a good story, right? Like if I am, if I'm watching a movie about Jason Bourne, who wants to find out who he is. And then in the first two minutes, they go, oh, you were an old secret agent and you lost your identity and the problem's over. I, I'm done. I'm not watching that movie anymore. It's done, right? Or if Liam Neeson's daughter gets kidnapped for the seventh time and he like all of a sudden gets that phone call that she's been kidnapped and instead it's a practical joke and she's like, hey, let's just hang out, dad. And then the whole movie is them hanging out again not a good story because there's no big problem. It has to be this huge problem. And that's what hooks the audience in a movie and a story. 
Yeah. It's the same in the marketing. If you don't talk about your customer's problems, you won't hook them. The story is not interesting. But when you do that, what you're also doing is in allowing them to opt into that story versus being manipulative over the top with everything. Um, two other just quick little things as well in the story framework. So we, we, I keep mentioning the story framework. You do have the links in the show notes that people can go back and really go a little bit more in depth in this, but really what this is, this, the framework we're talking about is called the story brand framework, which really breaks down story into seven elements. There are seven elements that every good story has. And I'll go through these quickly. Again, you can go back and listen to the other stuff uh, to get it more in more depth, but every story has a hero who wants something who then encounters a problem, who meets a guide who helps them overcome that problem. The guide gives them a plan. There's a moment the hero is called to action. And then there is there are stakes in the story that we have to know that a story can have a happy ending or a tragic ending. And the hero is trying to avoid the tragedy and go into the happy ending. And that's every good story. And when we teach marketing, we teach people to create talking points for each of those seven elements. The two last ones are things that people miss a lot in a good story. When you are doing marketing and when you're also writing a screenplay, what you have to do is cast a vision and get the audience hopeful for a happy ending, rooting for the guy to get the girl, the girl to become the president, the, you know, like all of those things. We need to know what that life can look like on the other side of the hero solving their problem. And also the hero has to be able to avoid pain. There has to be like, if, if a bomb is going to go off and it's just full of baby powder, we don't, we're not hooked in that story because there's nothing at stake, right? In your marketing, you have to have stakes in the story as well. You have to tell people what their life will be like what, if they use your product or service or what will happen if they avoid using your product or service. What's the happy ending and what's the tragedy they're trying to avoid? When it comes to being authentic in marketing, the, that's two areas that people often miss. If you over promise and cast too big of a vision of what life is like if they use you and you fail on that, you're being inauthentic. You're mm -hmm. lying. You're being manipulative. If you also make the stakes, the negative stakes way too high and basically say like, well, if you don't do it now, you're probably going to lose your house and you might die alone, right? <laughs> you can't do that either. You can't make the negative stakes too strong. So mm -hmm. when you make either of those out of balance with the whole story, you become inauthentic. But if you also don't tell, it's your responsibility as the guide to show people what they're missing out on if they don't work with you. And that is also, that is also I believe, being inauthentic. When you shrink and don't like say what actually can happen for them, that's being inauthentic as well. So there's a couple areas that I think people miss, but those are the big ones. So much, so much gold in this call and JJ, you're just killing it. This is going to be incredibly valuable for, you know, C-suite, head of production, head of marketing, powerful for loan officers, powerful for realtors. So, you know, this is, you know, there's going to be some quotes in this in a halftime report that I'm writing with Kristen Messerly, and she's the executive director of First Home IQ, which is a um, nonprofit dedicated to bringing more financial literacy to high schools and colleges like hey let's you know let's let's create you know the mortgage and real estate professionals in an organized thoughtful way of of educating high school college age gen z let's say um also first time home buyers are you know just a tremendous opportunity for mortgage and real estate any any suggestions or any nuance to creating effective marketing content that will both, you know, inspire Gen Z, but move, you know, inspire and educate. Like, like part of, you know, when I talk to Kristen, it's like, we can't just educate. We got to inspire and educate Gen Z. Anything come to mind? Oh, man. Um, I think that, you know, authenticity is obviously an overused word, but it's really key, um, you know, is that, Gen Z is, has, and the younger generations in particular have grown up with 
versions of AI and a lot of noise in the marketplace and the internet, and they can just smell it when, when it's inauthentic. So I think that's the first thing is just being real with the whole, with everything that you're talking about. The other part is that, um, you know, I think everything in, in that world needs to have some kind of global good attached to it. You know, it, you have to show people how what you are doing is making the world a better place. That's really big with Gen Z and younger generations right now that if you're not a good company that is actually helping the world be a better place, that is baseline. That is just baseline. It used to be that like that was a differentiator. The truth is now that's baseline. Now, here's what I would say. And so where because of that, I think what a lot of organizations do is they lead with that. I would still argue don't lead with that. Don't lead with we make the world a better place, so work with us. They want to make the world a better place. So they're not going to give you money so that you can make the world a better place. They want to make the world a better place. So everything that you're doing, show them how your company is helping them or your organization, your nonprofit, whatever you're doing is helping them make the world a better place. That those are just, I mean, there's a lot more to it, but because obviously you can get into, you know, different social media trends and all that stuff. But those are the big things I would say. You have to be authentic and you have to show them how not only are you baseline good for the world, but how when they work with you, they get to be good for the world. I, I love that you said that because, you know, one of the things to, you know, help loan officers connect with this mission, the fact that they are going into high schools and they are a first home IQ realtor actually helping the next generation do better. You know, we think that's going to make them, you know, more successful. Like teachers are going to do business with them. Parents are going to do business with them. And Gen Z is like, oh, you're helping educate the next generation. It's it's going to make them a more effective mortgage or real estate professional um, with that demographic. In addition to the fact, we really think there's a, a financial literacy crisis in America. There's yes. a, obviously an affordability crisis in America. And, and while we can't solve it, we could put a real dent in it with that. Yeah. And here's something going back to that a little bit with authenticity is that I don't think with, with the authenticity, you don't have to shy away from the fact that you can do, they can do business with you. Right. That's like, if you go in and just go, Hey man, I'm just here out of the goodness of my heart. And I'm just doing this because I really believe the world's a better place, whatever. I'm not going to no. when you even shrink in that space, what you're doing is you're actually being really inauthentic. So don't be afraid, even while you're doing those things to say, and by the way, I'm a person that can actually help you. Like, and here's my business card. Like, don't be afraid of that. If you just make it about like this, you know, I'm just doing this altruistically and I'm not actually doing this for business. People smell that and they're going to actually distrust you in that process. Even when you're going in and helping people and making the world a better place, just because I don't think that that help working in that space, like helping people with um, financial literacy and making their lives better, even for free, needs to be at odds with you growing your own business. They don't. They don't need to be at odds. And if you pretend like they are, that's actually really inauthentic. And the kids, the kids and the teachers can smell it. Mm -hmm. So be honest. Well, and and just to add on to that, I mean, if you are watching this and your advice makes a difference, like if you were, you know, JJ mentioned, hey, he's in this dilemma, you know, like if you're a loan officer that could, you know, very effectively and quickly ask him some questions and show him, you know, hey, you could be an accidental landlord. I know when you bought this house, it wasn't the plan, but look, you could rent it out. This is what it looks like. You could move up. This is what it looks like. And, and look what that would mean to you in five, 10, 20 years. If you could authentically do that, you know, visually, you know what, you show up differently. Like you believe that my advice is the best way I can serve you. So, you know, what JJ just said, or anyone listening, it's, it's, it's good selling. Um, it, and it's good for them. But here's the deal. You you authentically need to be that advisor. Like if you just, hey, I quote rates, I do loans, I know how to close loans on times, I know how to solve problems, I'm good with service. Like that's just not enough going forward. So um, Kareem, I'll give you the last question for JJ and then we'll wrap up this incredible interview. 
Sure. So uh, one thing I really love about the Soda Brand Framework, again, is the one-liner, the concept of one-liner, or specifically the answer to the question, what do you do, right? So uh, could you please share with us this framework? How, how can a, a mortgage professional answer this question or, or lead with that, with, that um, with what they do? Yeah. So what we call this a short story. And so it's kind of almost like an elevator pitch, but mm -hmm. it's the phrase you should use anytime you're explaining what you do. When you get that question, what do you do? Or you're even literally getting up on stage or getting in front of an audience to pitch or anything, any group that you're pitching to, it's a, it, the, it's called a one-liner and it's basically comprised of three parts, three talking points and you kind of start by creating these as separate talking points. This is the easy way to do it. It's created as three separate talking points and then put it together in one or two cohesive sentences that make sense. Here's the three parts. You start by naming what problem your customer is experiencing that you can solve. So talking point one is naming the problem. Talking point two is how you solve that problem. So you just say, I do this, basically, or you name your business, your company, and say, we do this. And then the third part is you talk about what success your customer will experience after they've worked with you. So I'll give you a version of a story brand, um, a story brand one-liner. So if somebody comes up to me and says, what do you do? I might say something like, so many companies are really struggling to stand out in a sea of noise because they don't know how to create a clear story in their marketing. At StoryBrand, we help companies create clear messaging in their marketing so that they can connect with more customers and grow their business. Nice. The, the three parts there. So that's kind of then, and I would probably, I just made that up off the top of my head. That's not what I would actually normally say, but then I would go and I would refine that a little bit and make it a little tighter. And a lot of people think it's it because it's called a one-liner that it needs to be one sentence. That's not true. It can be one or two sentences, but it needs to have those three parts. And the reason why you have those three parts, just to kind of go back a little bit on the narrative theory, is when you start with your customer's problem, instead of talking about yourself, what you're doing is you're making them the hero of the story and you're inviting them into a story that they can become curious about. You're hooking them, making the story interesting with the customer problem. Mm -hmm. Then you're immediately positioning yourself as a guide who can help them overcome that problem. So you're the Yoda who's going to show them the way, show them the force to help them overcome. And then you're going to put in the stakes in the story. You're going to make it interesting by saying, here's what life can be like. For us, it was you're going to connect with more customers and grow your business. When you use those three parts, it's a complete story, beginning, middle, and end, that positions the customer as the hero, makes it interesting by hooking them with the problem, and casts a vision for what life can be like after they've used your product or service. And then you drop the business card. And they, they well, reality is they will ask for it. That's yeah. the truth, is they will go if if you are their <laughs> customer right like if you're not they'll they'll go interesting <laughs> but yeah. if they're all at remotely a potential customer they're mm -hmm. going to say do you have a card do you have a business card and mm -hmm. they will ask for it or do you have a website they will ask for it jj this has been amazing so first of all i personally would be happy i don't do loans but i do advice and I'd be happy to do a total cost analysis for you to yes, help please. you make an informed choice. I'd be happy <laughs> to introduce you to a, a local mortgage coach in Nashville. We have hundreds of them. Um, but dude, this has been so powerful. You've, you've, you're going to help a lot. Here's the beautiful thing. You're going to help a lot of loan officers and a lot of realtors. But home ownership is how most Americans, 99% of Americans create wealth, financial freedom, uh, through homeownership and you're, you're going to help people, you know, solve problems, create amazing stories as a result of this. I'm super grateful. Um, Kareem, any last words you want to say before we wrap up today's call? JJ, I'm honored to be talking to you live. I've listened to you talk on podcasts and courses and read your books, but having you live has really uh, been uh, um, an honor for me. And I learned a lot just talking to you in marketing and in my profession. So thank you so much for your time and being with us today. Oh my gosh, this has been fantastic. And I and that's my heart too, is 
really like I was somebody who struggled with marketing and mm. felt like I was being manipulative or, you know, was trying to push and be salesy. And once I discovered this framework that really made the customer the hero, it it helped me as a marketer and a business owner. And that's what I want to do for everybody who's listening. And if anybody is interested in kind of learning some more about this and actually beginning the process of trying to figure out how to create your own marketing story about making your customer the hero, they can actually go to storybrand.com slash brand script. Brand script is one word. And what that is, is you just kind of sign in for our free tool that allows you to start creating these talking points about your customer story. So all the seven points that I mentioned, a hero who wants something, who has a problem, all of that stuff, it's just a piece, it's a it's one place where you can start creating talking points and clarify your own message so that you can grow your business. So that's storybrand.com slash brand script. And and we're gonna put a link down below. I have personally been through the process. It's helped mortgage coach, it helps trust engine. Uh you know, I, I just can't recommend it enough for every mortgage professional. First of all, anybody in business, anybody in influence, it would help moms and dads be more influential with their kids. So uh, this is a wrap. Really appreciate you, brother. I look forward to interviewing you again someday. Yes. And uh, thank you so much. Thanks, guys.